Hello everybody, this is Uncle Louie coming back at you with another episode. Um, this is number eight of the podcast. And for today, I will be talking about motivation, self-motivation to be exact. You know, I found that a surprisingly large amount of people aren't really that motivated. You know, you ever catch catch someone that's that's kind of just trying to do something, whether it, and you know, it, kind of an everyday thing, whether it be writing, trying to do some homework or, or or a job assignment, and they're kind of slugging through, and they can't really just they can't really push themselves or find the necessary motivation to kind of get through that, to kind of move forward, to kind of give them that that desire to want to kind of push themselves. So, you know, that's what I'm talking about. You know, one of the things that I do notice a lot, and especially around uh, New Year's, even though that was about a month about a month ago, but with New Year's, there's always these, these individuals that they always have this New Year's resolution to to, you know, if in, I'm talking about the ones that aren't exactly the, the most fit, I should say, just to keep it nice, just to put it nicely, but that aren't the most fit. Uh, they typically have these, the, the, the same goals every single year, year after year, where they, they promise themselves that they're gonna, you know, that they're gonna, they're gonna work hard, put in you know, put in the amount of exercise needed to, to lose the weight. And it's, you know, just a little bit of a side of a side note here, you know, weight isn't the biggest deal. Weight is, you're not, there's no point in losing weight. I'm just saying that. I think the one thing you should, or don't think about it in that sense, like I have to lose weight. The numbers mean crap. At least when it comes to just total body weight, it means crap. Think about it in a sense of, if you want to lose weight, think about losing Fat, actual fat, because weight could mean muscle weight. It could mean fat. It can be skin tissue, whatever. And you don't want to burn off muscle. That's the stuff that's gonna help you lose the actual fat. What makes you look bigger, in a in a negative perspective, you know, muscle helps you with that. So just want to put it out there. Um, you know, at least try to think of it that way. Like, don't think I want to lose weight. No, think I want to lose fat. I want to lose fat. Be specific. That way, kind of helps you there. Just a side note. Just a side note from uh, an experienced person like myself who has uh, dealt with that problem. But that's we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later in this episode. But yes, going back to the to kind of the 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 beginning, the intro, motivation, and with motivation, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, you know, there's there's too many to count, but Certainly a great number of people that can't find it and have, and some that want it and really want to, to find that, you know, a method to actually get that motivation, but they just don't know. You know, they look for these books that offer suggestions and they ask their friends, family, acquaintances, you know, and it's, the answers, they vary. Some of them are the same, some of them are different. You know, not every but not no two people are the same. So, likewise, it would stand to reason that no two methods are gonna work for the same person, or no two methods are gonna be like the universal cure all. You know, what might work for me isn't exactly gonna work for 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 someone else. But I will give you at least some, you know, some some tips here that that I've, that kind of I go through. Because, I mean, if, if, you, if you were to know me personally, if you were to know Uncle Louie personally, you know that I'm probably one of the most self-motivated people out there. You know, I push myself. I push myself harder and harder. And it seems like that was just something that I developed as I was growing up. You know, just pushing it and pushing it. And I don't know. It's, it's It almost seems like there really is no limit to it. At least now it's starting to seem that way because... Um, you know, with all that pushing, you know, the, what I use my motivation for is exercise, you know, especially doing a lot of cardio. And I've been lately, I've been pushing myself way too much. 
you know, my body's kind of taking that repercussion for the consequence for it. Because I keep pushing because, you know, I like it. I like it, but I also push myself to, to better myself. To become a better version of me. But I digress here. So what I do, or at least some of my methods for, for motivation. Now, here's one thing I want to make clear. And, and I just want to say, it be, you know, right off the bat that if you don't, if you're not like this, don't worry about it. This is just one of the things that comes in. That's, this is one of the factors that comes into play with being self-motivated. So if you don't have what I'm about to say, it's okay. There's, you know, you can still be self-motivated. So what I wanted to talk about, this, this first factor that I want to tell you all is you're just born with it. It's just something that you're born with. Just like some people are born with, 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 with good eyesight or, or positive thinking or negative thinking. You know, that's, that's what it is. You're, it's just something you're born with. Like you could learn it. You know, I do believe in that. I, you can learn it. But just there are some people that just have a natural gift for, for all these things. And, you know, to my surprise, and it really was a surprise, but to my surprise, I was born, I was born with this self-motivation. You know, maybe, maybe it wasn't apparent early on, but it certainly developed as I, as I got older. And so that's one factor that I will say um, really does play a big part, at least in, in my life when it comes to motivation and probably in some of all of you, you know, some of your, you listeners life as well, where you're just born with that kind of that innate desire or innate ability, almost like an instinct to, to push yourself even harder and harder and not really, how do I say, and not really know why or not really know the process behind it. You just know that you push yourself a lot and you like it or even if you don't like it you push yourself but you don't know why you do it so that's one way that's one factor that I wanted to get out of the way because that applies to me personally and I know that it'll probably apply to to some of you listeners out there so here's the second one now this one goes back to a comment I made earlier with not having this first factor which is you can learn you can learn, you can teach yourself how to be, how to, how to motivate, how to be a good motivator, how to be a self motivator. Now, I'm not one to personally go out and buy books about this stuff or go into like hiring a particular guru or whatever it is that they, they are out there that, that like life coaches that tell you, that tell you, you know, it's like, you need to do this process and you know, 25 step process to be, and after you're done, you know, you, you become this, this, this phenomenal self motivator and you'll never have that problem again. You know, and I, I just don't think that's necessary. I really don't. That's just my personal opinion on this, on this matter, but I don't think you need anybody to really tell you how to do it. You know, or to, or if, the, if someone does tell you, it doesn't need to be a whole lengthy process. It's something, it's very simple. I think it should just, you know, kind of with the, with the KISS method, keep it simple. Somebody. <laughs> but yeah, keep it simple. Just keep it simple. Keep these methods simple. The simpler it is, the easier it'll be to, to integrate that into your, into your, into your way of thinking, into your mind, and you'll be able to actually use it, you know, apply it, you'll be able to apply it in your life. So this one simple method that I would advise people who, who have trouble with, with motivation, this is one method that I advise that you do is first of all, um, sit down somewhere or lie down and think, think about your life. Honestly, like I know this, this might take couple of seconds, might take a couple of minutes, might take hours, depending on how deep you go into it. But I do want you to reflect on it as seriously as you can. Reflect on your life and think about what you've accomplished. And then think about what are mistakes you've made or things that just haven't turned out well at all. And I'm not talking about just 
very itty bitty minor things, but more serious things that have, you know, serious things that have happened, serious mistakes. Then after that, you, you think back to if, at least as much as you can, as much as you can recall, try to remember a particular or particular moments in your life, whether you be a child or a teenager or an adult or even older than, I mean, I think, you know, adult of all ages and whatnot, but think back to a particular morning that you just wanted to wake up. You wanted to wake up because you were excited about something. Now, I'll give you an example that this, this might actually, this example might apply to all of you, so, and I hope it does because it's fun. It's a very good, uh, good example, but. Try to re remember a time that when you were a, a little kid and you were in elementary, and let's say if your school had this, which I, th I know most, most uh, schools do, where there are certain times of the year where they take you out to a field trip, basically a field trip, whether it be to the zoo, the aquarium, the beach, uh, a mountain hiking trail, or the park for a picnic or to see a, a play or a musical or some musicians performing, you know, whatever it may be, a museum, whatever it may be. Try to think back to those times when you had one of those, when you had a, a field trip and you were excited, you know, because I would imagine that the night before you, you, you know, like me, you'd find it very difficult to fall asleep because you'd be wondering and thinking nonstop that you want tomorrow to be here already, that you wanted to go to that field trip, you know, go with your friends, kind of have a, even if it's a place you've been to a hundred times, just the fact that you're going to be there with some, with, 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 a, in a different situation than just with your parents or just your, your, what you consider your normal situation, excuse me, but what you consider your normal situation, you know, you are just excited, filled with, 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 you know, in a sense, like wonder, you're filled with wonder and, you know, believe it or not, if you do have, I'm telling you this right now, if you do have that as an, as a memory, or if that's happened to you, I should say, congratulations. There was a point in your life where you were a self motivator. Yeah, there was a point in your life. And I'm telling you that it's true. Because there's no way that a person who isn't, who doesn't motivate themselves, or at least who doesn't have the potential to motivate themselves, you know, I don't believe that they wouldn't be excited, or they wouldn't look forward to something, or they wouldn't even keep themselves up over 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 an event, or some some something that they want to do, or they want to be, you know, a place they want to be, you know, just for the events that are about to take place, you know. If you get excited and if, you know, if you're staying up to begin with, just to, just to, you know, give a little bit extra, but if you're staying up and if you have like, if you have the field trip the next day and if you're staying up, keeping yourself up the whole night, then that means that your motivation is so strong, that your wonder is so strong, that your desire to have fun is so strong that it kept your body up when your body is literally just dying to go to sleep, but you're not letting it. You're not allowing it. But think on that. Let that sink in. The fact that you kept your body up past the point that it wanted it to. How much motivation do you think that takes? Now, I will tell you that is about the equivalent of doing that intense workout. That is the equivalent. Because it's the same principles. When you go do a workout, and for all you exercise folks out there, you know, when you go do a workout, you know, I'm not going to say that everybody hates it, but I'm not going to say that everybody enjoys it the whole time. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are times when you enjoy it and times when you hate it. I'm in the same session. I know I'm one of them. You know, there are times when I want to go, I want to go run, have a nice good run. And then, you know, after a while, go to a nice jog just to get the blood flowing, warm up and you really just do a lot of cardio. That's just what my preference, but you know, when I think about it before I actually do it, you know, when I, when I think about it, 
it's a 50-50 whether I'm actually going to be in the mood to do it or not. But regardless, regardless of whether I want to do it or not, I still do it. I go out there because I know, and this is from a lot of experience, because I know that once I'm out there, once I actually start moving, even if I'm not in the, in, in, in the area where I run, as long as I'm, already, I'm going towards it or I'm moving in some way or manner, I'm already excited. I'm already anticipating the run because I associate my runs with progress, with good, with good feeling because it makes me feel good afterwards. Even if I'm maybe not right away or immediately, but maybe later that night or the following day, I feel much better. I feel a bit more able. I don't feel as sluggish. I feel more energetic. Even if I feel exhausted, you know, as soon when I when I finish when I finish that session, I may feel exhausted, but long term makes me feel fantastic. It makes me feel energized. So that's a that's the self motivation there. Now, if you don't have that first factor that I talked about, where you're just you weren't exactly born with it. And if you don't have a memory of that second, you know, that second factor talk about the memory of going to a field trip, then you're going to fall under this third factor that, that I want to say it's going to be a bit difficult because honestly, anything worth its weight in gold, just an expression, but anything worth its weight in something valuable, basically anything valuable. It's not always easy to acquire. Nothing's ever easy. You know, it can be, but that doesn't mean that it really is. At least not in the beginning. It becomes easier. But if you're not used to it, you gotta work for it. That's the point of, that's the values itself, you know. One of the basic values of life, you work hard. There's no such thing as easy, easy, easy all the time. If you work hard, then you'll get easy, because you've earned it. But if you don't work hard and if you don't put in the time and the full effort that, you know, the dedication for it, you're not going to get anything. And even if you do get it, maybe with your goal right away, long term wise, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose sight of that goal and you're just going to go right back to square one. So just just saying, putting it out there, work hard, dedicate yourself. Even if you don't want to do it, if you want to make that change, you force yourself to do it. You try. And even if you fail, keep trying and trying until you get it right. Work hard. Put put a lot of put a lot of you know persevere. Persevere with it. So the third factor, third method I should say, but that falls into the third factor. What to do when you'd have the first two don't apply. Well, Here's what I'll here's what I'll tell you. Here's what I want you to do. If the first two don't apply to you, and if you can't find some sort of gain as far as self methods for self motivation through the first two, you know, examples that I gave slash methods. So if you, you don't fall under any of those, then what I recommend you do is pick something out of your life. Right now, like right now, as you're listening to this, like just pick something that you love. You know, not necessarily just the love one, it could be, but I'm saying like pick something that you absolutely cannot do without. Whether it be a loved one, you know, whether it be family, a, 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 a spouse, you know, your children, uh, your favorite guitar, your favorite drum set, you know, your favorite TV, your favorite movie, whatever it may be, your favorite makeup set. Whatever it may be, something you can't do without your cell phone for a lot of you new millennials out there. So pick something you can't do without. Now, once you have that in your mind, and like I said, make sure it's something you, you really just can't can't see yourself without. Like you would you would go crazy if, if it wasn't there the next day. Like crazy. So once you have that, keep thinking about it. And keep thinking about how and, and focus on how you would feel if you lost it 
or if it wasn't there, if you were to never get it back ever again, never. Now, I'm pretty sure some of the emotions that might come through through your mind would be a lot of anger, hatred, frustration, annoyance. You know, just to name a few, just to keep it basic, you know, because keep it simple. That's just what I what I believe would be some of the some of the, the most basic things that you would learn that you would feel right off the bat. Now keep that in mind, all that frustration, all that anger, you know, let it kind of build and let it simmer in there in your mind, simmer around, feel it out. Don't do don't don't do anything from it yet. Just feel it out, see how it is. You know. Let those emotions run through your body. You know, just let it happen. Let it happen. Let the experience happen. This is a men kind of a mental exercise. So once you have that, and once maybe, I'll recommend maybe like five, ten minutes. Honestly, I'd recommend about ten, at least ten minutes of just doing this, this little exercise, where picture something, your favorite thing in the world, and you, lo you, you lose it forever, and let the feelings just run through you, let them run through you. Don't act on them. I don't. I don't want. I don't want to hear reports of. Oh, you know, Uncle Louie's podcast caused someone to get so angry that they, 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 they broke their house or they burned their house down or they destroyed their someone's neighbor's mailbox or something. You know, don't don't act on it. Just feel it out. Feel it out. So once you've done about at least 10 minutes of that, then go back to your normal self. You know, very simple, very simple thing. Go back to, you know, calm yourself down. Let it go. Release all that tension that's built up inside you. And now, every time that that you that you want to do something, like I'm just using this as an example, and this might apply to some of you. Like, let's say you you really want to exercise because maybe you're not in the best of shape, or your health is not where you want it to be, or you yourself are not. You know, you see yourself as in a better version of you know, like you want to see a better version of yourself. Well, what you do in th that particular situation, at least what I recommend is once you've done that third exercise, you know, what I just mentioned. And so think of, you know, every time you want to do an exercise, but for some reason you can't find the motivation to do it. Think about, do that exercise that I just talked about, you know, think about something precious to you, you know, something you wouldn't, you can't live without. And then what if, it, you know, thinking about it being gone and just let those emotions. And once you have those, those emotions built up inside you, then start changing it. Start thinking something. While you have the emotions in there, start thinking, you know, this is how I'm going to feel if I, never act, if I never do what I say I'm going to do. You see, that frustration, that anger, that nuisance, that pain almost. It's almost a pain. It's not in the same way that if you get stabbed, but it's a different. It's a it's a different kind of pain. I I believe it's a deeper pain, because it's psychological. It's in your mind. It breaks you down from the inside, from the soul. So, once you have that, you know, like I said, keep that, those emotions in there and just think about it. That's what you're gonna feel. That exercise basically was meant to. To, to kind of make you be aware and truly feel what it feels like. You know, I know that sounds a bit weird, but to really make you experience what it actually means to be frustrated all the time, to carry that kind of weight over, over your shoulders, to never accomplish any goal you set for yourself. Because I would imagine that most, if not all of you, who would, do, who would be doing this exercise, or even if you don't, almost all of you wouldn't ever want to feel that way all the time. Not even some of the times. It's a horrible feeling. It's the feeling of being a failure, of never accomplishing anything, of never getting anywhere in life. It's awful. It's downright despicable. It's heartbreaking. It's painful. Keyword here, painful. It's painful. So, for the third factor, for the third method, I should say, that's what I recommend. True, true and honest, that's what I recommend. Because once you feel that anger, that frustration, 
that pain inside of just a failing of never of that kind of helplessness of not being able to do anything about it come back to you to to the now to your feelings now to your surroundings and say you know what i don't want to feel this way but i can change it i will go out there and again this is the example for the exercise for the people having trouble with motivation with exercise you know go out there and go go just walk you can just start simple you know like i said keep it simple don't rush walk for maybe about like a couple days or if you're a little bit more on the heavy side walk for about a week or a week and a half and you know as much as you can maybe and like as much as you or i should say as frequently as you can but try to keep it to maybe like about 30 minutes to 45 minutes you know it doesn't have to be that much or you can even go as in if you're really not used to the exercise itself make it like 20 minutes you know what's what's 20 minutes of just walking you know you relax get out of the house just look you know walk around the neighborhood check out the neighbor's garden their house you know look at the sky breathe the fresh air you know enjoy it and that and before you know it you know you're gonna start adding to it adding to it you're gonna get better at it. You're gonna see a lot of improvement. And the, like I said, even though I gave the example just for, for, for people with, with the exercise, the lack of exercise motivation, you know, this applies to any other situation. Just think about that frustration of failure. Think about what it feels like to fail, to not accomplish anything, to just be stuck in square one for the rest of your life. Because honestly, the feeling that you get from, the, from that exercise that I talked about earlier, that is exa the exact feeling that you're probably gonna feel the rest of your life if you don't actually accomplish, if you don't set forth or do action on your on your goals, on what you wanna do. That's the motivation, or I should say, that's the result of a lack of a, motiv a lack of motivation. And if you want motivation, think about that. Do that third exercise. Feel that frustration. Feel that pain inside. Feel that that loss of, of will almost, of control of spirit. And I guarantee, if you don't actually go do something right away, you're at least gonna think about it, and after some time, if you do that exercise enough, you're not gonna be able to take it anymore. The pain's just gonna well up, and it's gonna be too much for you to handle, and you're gonna finally push yourself, motivate yourself to go do, to go do it. Whatever it is you want to do, whether it be exercise, whether it be, um, you know, doing more, doing more study. If you're maybe like a student, if you want to study more, you know, you will study. Um, or if you if you want to clean your house, you know, if you just can't find motivation, do that. Feel the frustration of having a dirty house all the time. You know, that helps. It helps to motivate you, it helps to push you, because we do have a limit. Everybody has a specific limit of tolerance that they're going to, or what I would say, of a specific level of tolerance for the BS that we, that, that we feed ourselves, that we can't do it. We can't. We can't. It's impossible. It's too hard. I'll never get there. But, I, but if, you, if, you, if you store up enough of that BS that we feed ourselves, eventually it's just going to explode. We're going to explode. We're going to do something about it. Because we're not going to be able to take it. We're going to be so frustrated. We're going to explode in anger that we're going to say, you know what? I'm going to show you. I'll show you that I, I don't need this. I don't need this. I can change. I can change it. I can change my life. Maybe not right away in the biggest way possible, not overnight. But just wait. One step today, thousand miles tomorrow. You know? I don't know if that's an actual quote, but... That's, my, that's, that's what I like to say. It's like one step today, a thousand miles tomorrow. Because all it takes is one step. One little, even if it's just a baby step. One step in the right direction. And you're, you're, you're gonna change, your life will change. In time, it, it'll change. I promise you that. I give you, Uncle Louie gives you his guarantee. So, that about wraps it up for this, for this episode, episode eight of this podcast, Motivation. Now, here, as you've all been waiting for, and yes, I'm gonna even do it on this one, the challenge question. So the challenge question for this episode is, 
what kind of situation do you need motivation in? You know, like what's your story basically when it comes to motivate, like if you have it, you know, what do you do to motivate yourself? And if you don't have it, what's your situation? You know, what is it that you're trying to motivate yourself for? So that's my question. It's a two part because it, 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 you know, one of it applies to the people that are self motivators and one of them applies to the ones that just don't have enough of it. Not yet. Listen to that word yet, not yet. Because I believe in you. I believe in all of you. You're all going to be self motivators. You're all going to be so good. You're going to change your lives. And I promise you that just, just take, you know, think long term, think long term. It's not going to take forever. You'll get there. But you have to be patient. You have to persevere. You have to have the dedication, the desire. And you have to have in you have to have enough BS that you set that you they you give yourself mentally, store it up. You have an, you have to have enough BS stored up in up here in the noggin to be able to say, I've had enough. I'm going to go do something about it. So, like I said, that's my challenge question. It's a two part, so if it, you know, whatever applies to you in your situation, please answer that in the comments. And um, this is Uncle Louie saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. And just one final, one, one quick final thing. If you're interested in maybe getting personal help from me about motivation, self-motivation, you know, techniques and whatnot, or just you want to talk to someone to, you know, kind of give your story and see what would work best for you in your particular situation, try to leave me a comment. Just just leave it and say, say pers uh, personal question. Just leave it like that. Personal question and then ask your question. And then I'll try to, I'll try to get back to you and, you know, we can talk maybe one on one. But like I said, I'll try to get back to you. So, as, as, as always, Uncle Louie saying, uh, thank you. Catch you later.